Here at Algolia, we believe that search should be at the center of every great user experience on the web. Users looking for the shortest path to your content will dive straight to the search bar. When they quickly find what they want, they become happy users. Unfortunately, sometimes they don't, and that's precisely where our new Algolia Analytics comes in. The search bar is often exclusively viewed from the user's perspective. But there's another less visible yet powerful side that you can leverage. It's in a way a feedback form that your users are more than willing to fill in over and over again, providing you with a flow of signals, telling you exactly what they want, when they find it, and when they don't. Algolia new analytics feature focuses on extracting those valuable signals for you, turning them into actionable metrics to get business insights, to improve relevance, and in turn to have a positive impact on your business. Here are the elements that the analytics will allow you to track. Search queries, what are the most popular queries and the ones returning zero results. Filters, what are the most used filter attributes, but also the most popular values for a given filters. Results, across all queries, what are the results that are the most returned to the users. Clicks, we can track the click position, at what position in the result set on average did the click occurred, and also the click through rate of a given query that is the number of clicks generated by a query over the number of times this query has been performed. Conversion. What is the conversion rate of a search query? Here, it is simply the add to cart action, but we'll leave it up to you to define what a conversion means for your business. The first three elements, queries, filters, results, comes working out of the box with analytics. For the two latter, a little extra work is required on your end as you will need to send us clicks and conversion events via our provided library. Now that we've seen what signals we can track, let's head over to the dashboard and check what we can learn from those. The overview tab gives us a quick access to key numbers and right away we can spot that some numbers are far from being great. We'll need to take some action to improve that. The no result rate is very high, almost a third of the queries returns nothing. The click position happens way down in the result list in 7th position on average, whereas the CTR and conversion rate could be much better. Below the graph, we have a quick access to the top 5 of popular queries, popular results, and queries with no results. Right there, we can tell that Beats headphones are very popular for both searches and results. Instax Mini, on the other hand, is very often searched but returns no results. Let's take a deeper look with the other tabs. The popular tab will let us see the most popular search queries and the most popular results. For the queries, we have data about the position, CTR, conversion, and count. Here, as we spotted earlier, we see that the Beats headphones are performing well, but there might be some room for improvement. So let's click on the query row to get more details. The pop-up will show us some additional data like the first 10 results shown for this specific query. The average click position of 9.02 matches the result list where we see that Beats headphones are actually shown at 8 and 9 position respectively. We can then easily understand that the results on top are not very relevant and by tweaking our settings and pushing the headphones higher in the result set, we would probably increase both CTR and conversions. Another insight we can get from these top queries is that our users are likely to Google those keywords, so they give us a solid intel on where to focus our SEO efforts. Moving on to the next tab, no results. This tab is very helpful to spot what doesn't work well in our search today. We can see that the no result rate is very high, 30% of our queries don't return any result to our users. This can mean a few different things. First, our relevance configuration might need some tweaking. Maybe some typo rules are too strictly set, or the tie-breaking algorithm rules have been modified for the worst. Another source of issue can be our data itself. The title, categories, and description might not reflect properly the words our users are looking for. This can be solved by enriching our data or with the help of a few synonyms. Finally, it might simply mean that we don't offer in our catalog what users are looking for. Here, for instance, we can see that the Instax Mini is not in our catalog, but it is very often searched. So it might be a good idea to offer some of those. For the remaining tabs, 
The Lost Opportunity tab will show us queries with low click-through rate and low conversion rate. The Click Position tab will give us more information on queries with clicks happening up or down the result set. Finally, the Filters tab will show us the most used attributes and the most used values per attribute. In this short video, we've demonstrated the potential behind all the data generated by your user queries and search behavior. With our new analytics feature, it is now easier than ever to put them to good use, improving relevance, SEO, giving you ideas on what to enrich or modify. If you have any questions regarding analytics and its availability, please send us a note and we'll be more than happy to give you more information. Thank you for watching.